Hey everyone, it's Anna and I'm back with another vintage cookbook. This time I'm reviewing Creative Cooking with Cottage Cheese. If you'd like to go straight to the recipe portion of this video, you can skip ahead to this timestamp. This book was a Christmas gift from Lindsay. So I did talk about this book a little bit in a previous video, but this time I'm actually cooking a recipe. This booklet was published in 1958. So we have some very lovely photographs on the front and on the back. I legitimately love cottage cheese and I usually have it on hand. I like to eat it with fruit, you know, for breakfast or a snack. I love cottage cheese. I know it's not everyone's favorite. This book promises to be an introduction to the tasty world of cottage cheese. So for all of you cottage cheese haters, maybe this booklet could change your mind. This lady certainly seems happy. Cottage cheese could make you this happy. Early on, this book does not disappoint as far as recipe names go. We have Glamour Dip, Teener Special Dunk, Blushing Pink Chip Dip. We're starting with a bang here. I did have a blue cornflower sighting, just a small one, and it's very hard to see, but this is a blue cornflower casserole dish. You can just barely make out the pattern on the side there. For as small of a book as it is, this book does have a ton of salads. You know, cottage cheese kind of makes you think, hold salads, it's a great thing to eat in the summer. We have a lovely frozen fruit cheese salad. What's actually in here though? <laughs> that will tell if it's something that I actually want to make. Cottage cheese, sour cream, powdered sugar, pineapple, orange, prunes. I kind of like prunes myself. Again, a thing that's not for everyone. Banana, cherries, blanched almonds, and then it says salad greens. I'm guessing that those salad greens are just used as kind of a garnish. And then it says creamy pink dressing. Oh, one cup dairy sour cream and two teaspoons of maraschino cherry juice. I, I would definitely try this salad. It sounds a little bit like frozen five cup salad or frozen ambrosia. I was totally expecting creamy pink dressing to have like ketchup in it or something. Thank goodness I was wrong. This goes into savory territory pretty quick. Cottage tuna mousse, gelatin, tomato sauce, cottage cheese, sour cream, tuna, celery, green pepper, pimento stuffed olives, grated onion, and salad greens. This is not high on my list. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of things that, that aren't okay with me in this one. So needless to say, this is not the recipe I'm preparing this week. A summer cool salad, which, you know, sounds pretty nice. There's a cheese layer, but then there's kind of a tomato aspic layer. I'm just, I'm not there. The two-tone salad, and that's two different types of savory gelatin molds. Two for one. Spicy cottage beet salad dressing. Cottage cheese, horseradish, garlic salt, blue cheese, beets, and sour cream. I feel like that could be just a salad by itself rather than the dressing. It says this dressing is particularly good on head lettuce salad. I'll take your word for it. Cottage cheese scrambled eggs. I'm trying to remember where I just saw this. I saw someone do this in a video. You beat the eggs like you normally would and you season them how you like, but then you add a cup of small curd cottage cheese and scramble them as usual. I know there are a lot of different schools of thought on scrambled eggs. I would like to try this one. I think it could be really, really good. There's also a few desserts in here. A Greek honey cheesecake. That sounds awesome. Cheesecake twirt. And there's no cream cheese or anything in these, is there? Very interesting. I've never made a cheesecake without cream cheese. So I guess the cottage cheese takes the place of the cream cheese. Peach snowballs. The name sounds good. It seems like a really fussy process. Peel and have and pit the peaches and then you put this like cottage cheese mixture inside. And then you put the two halves together, roll the whole thing in coconut and serve. I feel like that's messy. I think that is unnecessarily messy. <laughs> Just give me a peach half with some cottage cheese and stuff inside and I'll be fine. You don't have to make it into a snowball for me. I know this may come as a disappointment, but I could not bring myself to make Teener special dunk today. I just couldn't do it. If you didn't watch my previous video where I talked about this book, Teener special dunk consists of small curry cottage cheese, peanut butter, milk, ketchup, and sweet pickle relish. I couldn't do it. Glamour dip, same thing. We've got cottage cheese, anchovies, minced onion, green pepper, lemon juice, and dry mustard. I just didn't want to have to go buy some anchovies. So sorry about that. Maybe someday when I'm feeling adventurous, I'll make some teener special dunk and have y'all over. Here's what I am going to be making today. Today I am going to be preparing marbled cocoa squares. And these are marbled cocoa squares. 
I suspect that these are also marbled cocoa squares, so brownies? Question mark? The reason for the question mark is the serving instructions at the end of the recipe say cut into squares and serve warm or cooled with plenty of butter. I like butter. I have been known to eat butter on like banana bread and sweet breads and stuff. I think it's fine. I think it's tasty. I've never eaten a brownie with butter on it. So I'm wondering if maybe they're like less sweet than brownies. I don't know. It's kind of a chocolatey kind of cake. And then you have this cheese mixture that you swirl throughout. The butter thing, really threw me, so I'm curious to see how these are. <laughs> Marbled cocoa squares. The first thing we have to do is we have to make the cheese mixture. So basically I just blend all of those ingredients together. One cup of cottage cheese. It says small curd cottage cheese. I don't know what I got. It doesn't say. Looks small to me. We have one egg, quarter cup of sugar, one tablespoon of cornstarch, got a quarter teaspoon of salt. I think I put too much vanilla in this. It's supposed to be a half teaspoon. I think I might have used a full teaspoon. We're gonna gamble. <laughs> too much vanilla is not gonna be too bad, right? It just says blend cottage cheese with remaining ingredients and set aside. I'm gonna use a hand mixer. I thought about using a blender or an immersion blender, but they wouldn't have had either of those things back when this booklet was published. So I'm going hand mixer. Okay, wait, they would have had blenders, <laughs> but I don't think that an, an immersion blender was the same thing. Anyway, hand mixer, that's what we're doing. <laughs> I don't know if the point is to break up those cottage cheese curds or not. They didn't completely break up. They broke up a little bit. Eh, meh, meh. All right, next we're moving on to the cake portion. Into a small mixing bowl, mix together flour, baking powder, which I almost forgot, by the way, that would have been bad. Baking soda and salt, sugar, and cocoa. Mixing together. Bowl number three. <laughs> Combine the butter, so I have my melted butter as indicated in the recipe, it's cooled a little bit. I'll put this recipe in the description down below. We'll see if it turns out tasty enough for you to make at home. We've got two eggs. Look at me not cracking these on the side of my Pyrex bowl. And the milk, quarter cup of milk. And lastly, we've got half a teaspoon of vanilla. Now, we're gonna add the wet to the dry, completely all at once, completely all at once. <laughs> and now I beat this for two to three minutes. This is both fluffy and thick. All right, so next is when we transfer this to the pan. This pan did so well for me in my chili quiche video, I decided to go with it again. It says to put half of this batter into my pan. So that is what we will do. It will be approximate. And now we add our cheese mixture. This is like not that thick. All of the cheese mixture, all of it, here goes. And then we top this with the remaining batter. I don't know that I'm gonna get this quite as even. It's not gonna be easy to spread on top of that very liquidy filling, which feels wrong to me, but hopefully it's not. Also, these are supposed to be marbled and they certainly didn't look very marbled in the photograph. <laughs> this does not look great. Finally, it says, draw a knife or spoon through the layers to give the marbled effect. This is not so much layers. I'm not even gonna tip it. This is like not gonna work. We'll try. I just don't know why they don't look marbled in the photo. Maybe we'll find out after these bake. I think I should have blended the cheese mixture in a blender because it's just not feeling right to me. Again, not gonna tip it too far, but Here's kind of what we're working with. So now I bake this at 350 degrees for 40 minutes. Here is what we ended up with. I let it cool for a while. Actually, that's why I'm handling this so much. It's, it's only a little warm. So it seems like what happened was the cake batter kind of like rose up and over the cheese mixture. I probably should have done a little bit better job here of like marbling it and spreading it out, but it looks pretty interesting. I, I see less marbling and more just like little flecks of cottage cheese inside these squares. I'm gonna try this without butter, even though it says you can serve it with lots of butter. I wanna see what it tastes like without. Here we go. Hmm, hold on. It's not bad. I think I like it. It's not a brownie. 
It is most definitely sort of like a cake. It's not that sweet. I really do taste a lot of the like cheesy flavor from the cottage cheese. I don't know that this is something you could like pick up and eat. Like this fork seems necessary. It does not seem like the right vehicle for butter to me, <laughs> but it's, it's pretty tasty. It's a little bit like a cheesecake brownie, not very sweet. Get a lot of that cheesy, cheesy flavor. So if you like that sort of thing, these would be good for you. But if, if you're not into that, I wouldn't recommend it. I don't really know what to make of these. <laughs> They're unusual, but I like them. I don't know that everybody would like them. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel by clicking on the red button below. This really helps my channel grow and gives more people the opportunity to watch my videos. Thanks again, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.